what are the classic FAP colonic manifestation? So I told you there is familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome and the attenuated FAP, right? Now, initially, we are looking at the classic FAP. As the name suggests, adenomatous polyposis or the FAP is characterized by hundreds to thousands of polyps in the colon. Minimum 100 polyps is what you need to call it a classic familial adenomatous polyposis. So, at least a 100, usually the whole colon, the entire right, left, transverse colon, it will be studded with innumerous polyps, usually thousands of multiple, multiple polyps, but at least a 100 is what is required. These polyps are essentially adenomas, okay? When they form, these polyps are essentially adenomas. Of course, there is a significant chance, almost near always, uh, there is a chance for malignant transformation. We will see that later. The main, the main age of onset for polyps, that means the age at which polyps start occurring on an average is 16 years. This is an important question. The mean age of onset of polyps is usually 16 years. At the stage of, at the early stages of development of the polyp, the patients are usually asymptomatic at that stage. But the mean age for malignancy is 39 years. Okay, so average, or it's there will be hundreds to thousands of polyps. Not all these polyps will turn malignant. You know, one of these polyps will turn malignant, and then you pick up the malignancy usually, and then go ahead and do the treatment and the genetic testing and all of that. If you are already suspecting FAP in a family, here is your good news. At 16 years, that is the age of onset of polyps average. And the average age of malignancy is 39 years. So there is actually a good window of 23 years between the age of onset of uh, polyp polyposis and the age of malignancy diagnosis where you can actually try and intervene and save the patient or at least reduce the chances of malignancy in that patient. That is the importance of the statement. We'll discuss all that later on. For the time being, remember that 16 years is the average age of onset of polyps and 39 years is the average age of malignancy. Almost every patient with FAP will develop CA colon. At least one of these thousands of polyps will definitely turn malignant. So the chance of colonic malignancy if untreated in an FAP patient is almost 100%, 100%. Also, 80% of cancers in FAP are left-sided. That means the descending colon is usually involved, left side of the colon. Almost everyone with FAP will develop colonic cancer if untreated. Now, that was the classic FAP. Now, what about the attenuated FAP? Okay, attenuated FAP, it's very, very similar to the classic FAP. The mutation happens on chromosome number 5, on chromosome number 5, and on the APC tumor suppressor gene itself so genetics is the same but the locus is a little different it's not on the same locus of the gene as for classic fap in the attenuated fap there is a mild difference in the locus you don't have to know that much remember it's the same gene and the same chromosome but because there is a small difference in the locus that is involved there is a reduction in the number of polyps okay the number of polyps is usually not hundreds to thousands, but it's usually below 100. On our average, you will say 10 to 99 polyps is what you generally see. 100 and above is usually classified into the classic FAP. Remember, the risk of malignancy is a little less when compared to the classic FAP. In classic FAP, the risk of malignancy was 100%. Here, the risk of malignancy is 80%. It's not bad, but one in five might escape without a malignancy but 80% of your patients with attenuated FAP will also develop malignancy. Also, the age of onset of polyps is a little late. For the classic FAP, the age of onset average was 16. Here, the average age of polyps to develop is 44. And here, the average age for CA colon to develop is usually 58. Okay, 58. So there, it was 16 and 39. Here it is 44 and 58. Also, in attenuated FAP, the cancers tend to occur a little more proximally. 
in the classic FAP users more distally in the left side of the colon. Here it happens to be a little more proximal. Now, in addition to this, what are the other GI features? You can have gastric polyps, you know, the penetrance or the incidence of non colonic features are less than colonic features. Almost everyone will have colonic polyps, almost everyone with classic FAP that will turn malignant. In acetonated FAP, also 80% of these polyps or 80% of these patients will have malignant transformation. When it comes to the non colonic features, the incidence is a little less. You won't have such extensive incidences. Some people will have some extra colonic features, some may not have. Coming to gastric polyps, what do you see in the stomach? What you see most common in the stomach is fundic gland polyps, not exactly your adenomas. The adenomas in the stomach are very, very rare. Gastric adenomas are rare in FAP. What you see most commonly is fundic gland polyps. They have low risk for malignant transformation. Gastric adenomas are rare, usually low risk, and they are usually seen in the antrum of the stomach as isolated lesions. Okay, they are usually seen in the antrum of the stomach as isolated lesions. So, stomach you will have gastric polyps. Fundic gland polyps is most common. You can rarely have gastric adenomas. Both of them have got very low malignant potential. Also, the gastric adenomas usually they are rare. When they occur, they usually occur in the antrum and as isolated lesions, not as multiple lesions, but as isolated lesions. Coming to the duodenum, duodenal adenomas are common. In stomach, again, it was the fundic gland polyps, but for duodenum, duodenal adenomas are much more common. They have high incidence, the duodenal adenomas. And remember, there is 3 to 5 percent risk of duodenal cancers. It's high, but when you look at the colonic cancer risk, which is around 100 percent in classic FAP, this is much less. But even then, a 5 percent risk of duodenal cancer is still a considerably high number. That makes this small intestinal or duodenal malignancies the second most common cancer in a patient with FAP. Okay. The second most common malignancy in a patient with FAP are the duodenal cancers that will include the duodenal cancers as well as the biliary tract cancers and the periampillary cancers that also come around the duodenum will also be coming under this subheading. Um, the ampullary and per per periampillary adenomas, there is a high chance of occurrence of ampullary and periampillary adenomas. So, of course, there is a high chance of ampullary and periampillary tumors, gallbladder tumors, per se small intestinal tumors. So, the, uh, the pancreas, the, the tumors that comes in and around the pancreas and the duodenum, the ampullary and periampillary tumors, the biliary tract tumors, all these come here. Another important feature of FAP is the desmoid tumor. The incidence is around 10 to 15 percent desmoid tumor. 10 to 15 percent desmoid you know is a soft tissue tumor it can happen in the parietal uh, tissue as well as the visceral tissue it can come in the abdominal walls desmoid is an important tumor an important cause of mortality and morbidity in any patient so in fap as well the most common site is abdomen and remember females are at a higher risk for the development of desmoid tumors in a patient with fap now i refer to gapps the gastric adenocarcinoma proximal polyposis of stomach, gastric adenocarcinoma and proximal polyposis of stomach syndrome. Again, remember, it is the same gene as FAP. It's the same chromosome, just the different locus. Locus is different. And here, the predominant manifestations happen in the stomach. There, we were looking at more than 100 polyps in colon, right? Here, you will have more than 100 polyps in the body and fundus. The antrum here is paired characteristically. No colonic polyps and there is high risk of gastric cancer. The most common primary in GAPPS is the fundal gland polyp. Okay, it is the fundal gland polyp. Now, what are the other manifestations that are seen outside of the GA tract? What are the other manifestations? One, you can have thyroid cancer. Okay, 
thyroid cancer can occur in 3 percentage of patients with FAP. 3 percentage of patients you can have thyroid cancer. Of course, the most common uh, sexes of uh, females are more commonly involved. Papillary, which is generally the most common type of thyroid cancer, is the most common thyroid cancer that is involved uh, in FAP as well, the papillary thyroid carcinoma. And the mean age of occurrence of thyroid cancer is usually around 30 years of age. For classic FAP, it was 39 years. For uh, attenuated FAP, it was 58 to 59 years. For thyroid cancer, the risk is only 3%. When it occurs, it occurs a little earlier, around 30 years on an average. And then there is hepatoblastoma. The risk is relatively less. It's very rare, but it has a definite association with FAP syndrome. Not commonly seen, but it can definitely happen. And it, as you know, occurs in childhood. It can occur as early as in fancy. Most cases occur in the 6 months to 36 months age group. It can ha happen around 4 years, 5 years as well. So, hepatoblastoma, which is a pediatric liver tumor, can be a rare manifestation. The association between these familial adenomatous polyposis, this colonic polyps caused by FAP and CNS tumors, you know, there could be multiple CNS tumors like astrocytomas, ependymomas, or gliomas, middleoblastomas. So, all these tumors can be associated with these colonic polyposis seen with FAP. So this FAP with this classical APC, muta APC gene mutation on chromosome 5, this FAP plus CNS tumor is what you call FAP plus TNS tumor is what you call the Turcot syndrome. And remember, the most common CNS tumor that is involved in Turcot syndrome is the medulloblastoma. I think you don't have to know much more in detail about Turcot. This much information must be enough. All the classical features of FAP plus or minus could be there. Colonic polyposis will definitely be there. That plus the presence of this CNS tumor, the most commonly one being medulloblastoma makes it Turcot syndrome. As per the recent uh, concept, not just FAP, even something like a Lynch syndrome along with CNS tumor is also now considered to be Turcot. What are the other manifestations that is seen outside? You can have skin tumors like sebaceous cysts, lipomas, osteomas, then can is possible in the bone. You can have fibromas. All these soft tissue tumors can happen. You can have supernumerary teeth. This could be one of the MCQs for you supernumerary teeth then you can have nasopharyngeal angiofibromas you can have adrenal adenomas these are all described with fap but rather rare manifestations but if present they should guide you or they should force you to think along the terms of fap and then that is what you call chrpe or congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium in the eye is usually picked up on a slit lamp examination. You require a slit lamp examination to pick that up. It's called CHRPE or congenital hypertrophy of retinal, epi retinal pigment epithelium. It's a manifestation of FAP. So you can have an MCQ there, which is the ocular finding seen in patients with FAP. This is your answer. And then there is something called the Gartner syndrome. I believe most of you know that it is a classic association of the colonic polyposis plus these extra colonic features. It was considered to be a different entity earlier, but now we know that the gene involved is APC gene itself. That is chromosome number five. Gartner syndrome, that is a classic association of colonic polyposis plus the extra colonic features, APC gene. And what are the risk of malignancies? The same thing that we discussed. Colonic V set, you can have gastric risk, especially in GAPPS. Even in the classic FAP, there is a small risk of gastric malignancy. Then this liver, duodenum, biliary tract, gallbladder, pancreas, though come under those small intestinal in and around tumors. It involves the liver tumors as well. Duodenal, biliary tract, gallbladder, pancreas, ampullary, periampullary tumors. And then as we discussed, thyroid cancer, just a repetition 
just know what Gardner syndrome is. It's the classic association of this colonic and extracolonic features.